People make choices all the time. People rationalize their choices in a variety of ways. For example, consider this scenario. You and a friend buy a ticket to go to a concert for a new band that has been hyped around town. You go and after just five minutes realize that the band is awful. You tell your friend you think you should leave, but they say no, we need to get our money's worth. We can't waste our tickets, let's stay. This sort of reasoning is known as the sunk cost effect. That is, the tendency for someone who has invested time, money, and effort into a course of action to continue to complete it even when negative consequences arise. A sunk cost is an investment that's already been made and cannot be recovered. Despite this fact, people will use sunk cost to try and justify their choices. This sort of reasoning is actually misguided. Decisions are rationally made by considering incremental costs, that is, future possibilities, not whether you are staying consistent with your previous ones, like sunk costs. We know such decisions based on sunk costs are bad, but people easily are swayed by their influence. Studies show just how much an influence a previous investment can have on a decision, even when the decision is poor. For example, one experiment posed the following scenario to test the sunk cost effect. A group of students are told the following scenario. Imagine that they love skiing, so that they buy a $100 ticket to go on a ski trip in Michigan. Later, they also buy a $50 ticket for another ski trip in Wisconsin. This latter purchase makes them especially happy because after researching both locations, they find out that they'll actually enjoy the Wisconsin trip the most. But you find out you accidentally booked the trips for the same weekend. So given that the tickets are non-refundable, which trip do you go on? Michigan or Wisconsin? Cost-benefit analysis says to go to Wisconsin. You'll enjoy it more, even though Michigan costs you more for the ticket. After all, you already spent the $100 and the $50. You don't get that money back, making this a sunk cost scenario. The paid tickets should not be a factor. From this, the only factor should be which place you'd prefer to go to more. Because of this, the Wisconsin trip should probably be chosen. The surprising result, however, is that 46% of students asked said they'd go to Michigan. The researchers concluded that the sunk cost of $100, the more expensive ticket, influences the students to pick the decision that they know that they'd like less of the two decisions. This sunk cost effect even works on a national level, not just an individual basis as the ones described before. When countries lose hundreds of soldiers in a dangerous war, they often send even more soldiers to battle because they believe that a sacrifice has been made from the previous soldiers and that it should not go in vain. We fall victim to this very line of reasoning. One study revealed that people seem more likely to support a war when told high casualty counts. In 2007, while Bush was president, two groups were tested on their war attitudes. One group was tested on scenarios involving sunk costs, similar to the scenarios described before. The other was a control group, who lacked such tests. Both groups were then presented with a newspaper article. One group had an article that described the high casualty counts in the Iraq war. The other group had an article about the weather. Then both groups were tested on their attitudes towards the war. The group that was both exposed to the sunk cost tests and the high casualty count article indicated more support for the war, leading researchers to conclude that the exposure of these conditions caused the participants to trigger increased support for war. That is, when people were exposed to scenarios that made them think about sunk costs, they ended up extending the same sort of thought process to how they expressed support for the war. This experiment was repeated nearly two years later under Obama's presidency and concerning the Afghanistan war. Results for this test were similar. The researchers of this study argued that politicians could leverage support for war efforts by highlighting casualty counts, and therefore use a similar don't-waste language associated with sunk cost scenarios. It's hard to resist a wounded soldier, for example, who asks for continued support of the war effort so that you won't see his contributions as in vain. As well, people supporting the war say that they do because they don't want lives wasted. But sunk costs are gone, the soldiers' lives won't be returned by fighting more. In fact, the chances that more life will be lost is only increased as the war goes on. So why do we fall victim to sunk costs? Well, our brains just may be wired for it. fMRI scans show that different brain regions are associated with sunk and incremental costs. fMRI imaging done on subjects revealed that the parts of the brain associated with risk, such as the lateral, frontal, and parietal cortices, increased in the presence of higher previous investments or sunk costs. However, situations involving decreased future investments, that is, incremental costs, resulted in activity in different regions of the brain, such as the striatum and medial prefrontal cortices. We can see how these brain regions come into action when looking at the theory known as prospect theory. That is, between a certain loss and a risky gain, people are likely to reject a certain loss in favor of continued investment.
This theory is used to try and support why people are influenced by sunk costs. To explain this, imagine what is called the dollar auction game. This game concerns a person auctioning off a dollar, that is, saying that he will give one dollar to the highest bidder. The dollar is given to the highest bidder, but the way the game works is that the two highest bidders pay. So if one person bids, say, 10 cents, and another outbids by saying that they'll pay 15 cents, the auctioneer gets 25 cents, and the highest bidder gets the dollar. The second highest bidder loses 10 cents. In this scenario, the second highest bidder is incentivized to keep bidding in order to avoid certain loss. When someone bids higher, the lower bidder knows that they'll lose a certain amount. It's risky to keep on bidding, but the brain says that that's certainly better than a loss. As bids go higher and higher, the value of the dollar goes well over the actual value of the dollar. As long as the lower bidder doesn't want a loss, they will keep bidding. Their initial sunk cost is certain, but their incremental cost is more attractive, since they might win. With this scenario in mind, it's easy to see why people might be affected by sunk costs. Researchers from the fMRI study believe this theory is supported by their research. That is, as the sunk cost increases, the brain continues to activate regions associated with risk-taking. That is, as sunk costs increase, their brain becomes more and more involved with analyzing risk, seemingly consistent with the prospect theory. In addition to this, another study concerning fMRI imaging suggests other parts of the brain that might contribute to this effect. For example, a part of our brain tells us that it probably wouldn't have been a good idea to engage in the dollar auction in the first place. This is the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, a region crucial to decision making and representation of expected value. Research shows that when we make investments, however, we actually diminish the activity in this region of the brain. This is probably why if you haven't bid anything, you might see the auction as a silly bet for bidders. But if you're already bidding in the game, you will remain committed to following prospect theory, even if previously you would have seen the game as silly. In addition, remember the don't waste mentality mentioned before? Well, the ventromedial cortex is negatively related to another part of the brain, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex a part of the brain associated with rule construction and normative reasoning, including abstract ideas such as don't waste. When sunk costs are present and the ventral medial cortex becomes inhibited, it seems that the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex becomes more activated, implying it takes over reasoning and gives rise to the principles like don't waste that are consistent with the sunk cost effect. In short, people will always struggle to fight sunk costs from hampering their reason. Certainly our brains seem wired to be victim to previous investments, even if the sunk costs shouldn't be a factor in our reasoning. This can lead to bad decisions, but it is certainly possible to be able to be aware of this effect and counteract it. So the next time you go out and spend money on overpriced movie tickets, popcorn, soda, and candy for a movie, don't use those costs to rationalize having to sit through a two-hour movie when you discover five minutes in that you hate it. Instead, spare yourself the pain. Go home and watch some good old reliable Netflix instead.